Hey, darling. I didn't wake you, did I? Oh, you can't sleep. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. I'm just reading in bed. I'm reading about science, as it turns out. Because I'm a huge nerd. <laughs> you want me to read to you? No. Why, you want me to bore you to sleep? I think this might be a bit too advanced for you. Um, I could tell you about it, though, if you really wanted me to. How about you rest your head on my chest, and I'll ramble on about science stuff until you fall asleep. Okay? I'm reading about receptor agonists. How to explain it. So, there's lots of machines in your body that do different things. And most of them are regulated with a lock. Or an ignition switch, if you like. And those ignition switches are receptors. They wait for a particular chemical to come along and bind to it. And that'll activate it. An agonist is like the key. So it can be like a hormone, like testosterone, or it can be a neurotransmitter, like dopamine, or it can be a drug, if it comes from somewhere outside the body. All sorts of stuff, really. The chemical structure of an agonist is just right so that it can fit into a particular slot inside the receptor. And because of the way it's shaped and all the little chemicals that hang off it, it can interact with the receptor in just a way that it makes something happen. It kind of turns on a process in the body. And if you need more of something, or you need something to happen, then you might need to take a drug to help kickstart whatever that machine is and whatever it does for the body. Mm, but sometimes a key, an agonist, will also slot into another kind of receptor. And it might do something that you don't want it to do. Turn on something that shouldn't have been turned on, or make too much of something. And that's usually when you get side effects. But there's also something called an antagonist, which comes along and binds to a receptor and blocks it. So none of the agonists can get in. It doesn't activate the receptor, it just blocks it, takes up space. So it can stop something from happening or make sure it doesn't happen too much. But then if you really want something to be tightly regulated, you can also have an inhibitor. Uh, that might occur naturally, or it might be something that you need to take as a drug to stop something from happening too much. So it kind of clamps down on the machine or the receptor and stops it from working. And it might be a reversible inhibitor, or it might be an irreversible one. There's lots of different ways that this sort of stuff can happen. It's a little complicated. But basically, I'm just reading about how the different spaces inside receptors and the different chemical properties inside those receptors can influence the effectiveness of different drugs. You might know what the natural agonist of a receptor is like, so you might build a chemical that's kind of similar in shape, but you might add a few little changes here and there and make a new drug that's even more effective at turning on that machine, slotting into that receptor in just the right way so that it makes something happen even more effectively. And that might be really great if the body needs more of that thing because someone has a disease or something else happened to stop them from making enough of something 
or if they're making too much of something and you need to shut it off, you can make a powerful antagonist or an inhibitor. It's probably kind of boring, I guess, to other people, but I think it's kind of cool. I like it. Designing new drugs and making different chemicals and seeing how they react and yeah, it's pretty nerdy, I know, but I like that kind of stuff. <laughs> Science geek. Mm -hmm. But maybe that's enough science for now. Maybe it's time for you to cuddle up with me. Mm -hmm. You can listen to my heartbeat and my breathing. Feel the rise and fall of my chest as I stroke your hair and hold you until you fall asleep. What do you say? Let's fall asleep together, darling. Yeah. <laughs> Good night, doll. Sweet dream.